Now we will see very interesting property that is called as conjugation property of DFT and with this we will also study conjugation symmetry that is symmetry properties of DFT. First we will see uh, what happens when we take conjugate of x of n while we are going to take DFT of this signal. So, so let us see the statement. If x of n is conjugated, its DFT becomes x conjugate of minus k circularly periodic with capital N that is the period. You can simply write this as x star of n minus k. So this is same as this. We will take proof of this property. Okay. So BFT of conjugate of x of n Simply write the definition. Here our signal is x star of n into e raised to minus j 2 pi by capital N k n. So this is the definition we have uh, written a signal here x star of n. Now we will take star outside. The whole expression will then become e raised to j 2 pi by n k n. Conjugate of this term is uh, getting rid of this minus sign. Okay. So the whole term conjugated will look like this. But in our definition, original definition of DFT, we have a minus sign here. So, we will adjust that minus sign like this. Minus J. And this will write as minus K into N whole conjugate. Okay, so now this inside this bracket is x of minus k. Okay, you can write it as like this because it is circularly periodic with period capital N and the whole term conjugated. Okay, so this becomes x star of k circularly periodic with period n also we can write it as x star of n minus k okay. so this is the proof of conjugation so this becomes when we take conjugate of x of n its dft is x star of n minus k so now uh, we will see conjugate symmetry properties. We will add symmetry conditions in this definition. So first we will see the condition if the signal is real. If x of n is real. So the first condition of n is real. So we can write x of n is equal to x conjugate of n if the signal is real. Okay. So we will take DFT of both the terms. like this. Now we know x of n is having dft, x of k, dft of this term is x conjugate of n minus k. Okay. x star of n minus k. So you can see here 
we can write the same term x star of minus k periodic by period capital N. So we can see here x of k, x of minus k and a conjugate sign here. So we can say it is conjugate symmetric. So the DFT is conjugate symmetry if x of n is real. If x of n is real, its DFT is conjugate because of this conjugate sign conjugate symmetric because of x of k is equal to this minus sign is here x of minus k with this conjugate sign it becomes conjugate symmetric okay we'll add one more condition if x of n is real and even and even so this will become our second condition if x of n is real And even, you know for even signal, what is the definition? x of n is equal to x of minus n. Okay. So, we will take DFT of this whole statement after taking DFT. So, DFT of this x of k. DFT of this, you know, x star of n minus k. DFT of this time reversal. Okay. So, DFT of this is x of n minus k. Okay. So, you see the whole statement here. First, we will see this two. This two. x of k is equal to x of n minus k means x of minus k. So, it shows that this DFT is E1. Okay. E1. And com now compare. I will write here E1. Now compare this to this one with this one. Now, x star of n minus k is equal to x of n minus k. So, after taking conjugate sign after taking conjugate of this we are getting this means x of x star of n is equal to x of n in short so it is real ok so if x of n the signal is real and even then the DFT is real and E1. Okay. We will take another condition. We will make it odd. The third condition. If x of n is real and odd. So what change will happen here? In this statement. If it is real. It is real. x of n is equal to x star of n. And if it is odd. Then we are getting a minus sign here. Okay. So automatically a minus sign get added here. So DFT of this is x of k. x star of n. We are having DFT x star of n minus k is equal to minus sign. And DFT of x of minus n is x of n minus k. Okay. So again. We are comparing this to the first and the last term. First and the last term. You see x of k is equal to minus x of n minus k. So it is showing that it is odd. So the DFT is odd in this case. And 
x star of n minus k, we are having a change sign here, minus sign. So, it is becoming imaginary. Okay, when it is odd, the DFT is becoming imaginary. So, we can say finally, x of n, when it is real and odd, its DFT is imaginary and odd. Okay. Now we will proceed to a fourth condition. When x of n is an imaginary signal. x star of n is equal to minus x of n. If we can say that x of n taking the conjugate of the whole expression we will get minus x star of n. Okay. So when the signal is imaginary this is the statement we will take dft of this so for this dft is x of k for this minus x star of n minus k okay so here a minus sign is added but the samples are like this x of k x of n minus k so it is when we are taking conjugation this become anti-symmetric. So, DFT is in this case when the signal is imaginary DFT is conjugate anti-symmetric. Okay. So, we will add even and odd cases in this so, we will add a fifth case here. This. Imaginary and even. Even and imaginary. So, x of n is equal to for imaginary we will write first condition x conjugate of n and for even signal x of n is equal to x of minus n so we will take dft again and compare so dft of this is x of k dft of this is minus star of n minus k dft of this x of minus n is equal to x of n minus k ok so when the signal is imaginary and even we are doing dft like this so we will first compare these two x of k is equal to x of n minus k so, this DFT statement is showing us that it is even. Even, okay. Now, we will compare this to, okay. So, we will we'll assume that this minus sign is here. Uh, okay. So, x star of n minus k is equal to minus x of n minus k, okay. After conjugation, it is becoming negative or you can consider the same statement as it is. So, it is becoming negative after taking conjugation. So, it is imaginary. Okay. So, we can conclude that if the signal is imaginary and even it's DFT is becoming imaginary and even.
So D of T in this case is imaginary and E1. Okay. We'll go to our last case considering the odd signal. So what changes will have happen here? <clears throat> if we consider an odd signal. So this statement will change here. X of n is equal to minus x star of n is equal to minus x of minus n. <clears throat> After taking DFT, this 2 will remain as it is. Here 1 minus sign is added. Okay. Now we will compare this to first and the last term. X of k is equal to the minus x of n minus k. So a minus sign is getting added here. So this is becoming odd. Now, now you can remove this both <coughs> minus signs when you are comparing this to. So this will become x star of n minus k is equal to x of n minus k. So after taking conjugation, no sign change is there.